Boy, that crack of the bat sure sounds sweet. Hello, Frog fans. Welcome to Post Game Beers Podcast. We are the Lupton Drinking Club at Lupton Beers on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. We've got uh, YouTube, everything that you want from a social media perspective. We're there at Lupton Beers. I'm your host, Kyle Malloy at YellMK on Twitter, joined by my co-host, the master of activities, Jacob Sailors at JD Sailors. We've got the full crew tonight uh, to celebrate your non-conference undefeated Horn Frogs. We've got our producer, Crazy Ray Cartwright. We've got the Sultan of Stat, Martin Guerrero. He was there in person at Oklahoma State. Uh, we That's also nice. have the uninformed horse, <laughs> Garrett <laughs> Evans. Fellas, uh, fortunately, conference play has not started yet. Uh, we're just here to, to celebrate just a great season so far. Jacob, I'm going to throw it to you. Um, when... You're not at a, you're not Lupton. You're not out, you're not, you know, celebrating a game outside. What do you like to do outside in the springtime? It's, it's not hot yet. It's not cold. It's pretty good temperature. What are, what are your favorite outside outdoor activities? Brother, I am a 30 second jog to the Katy Trail. Does that answer your question? That's actually sounds, sounds pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, especially with the puppy, you know? When I thought you were going to finish that and say, I'm 30-second jog to Katy Trail Ice House. but uh, Well, one, one, one in the cool. same, you know. I, I'll yeah. tell you this, though. When I do take – I just went out tonight, actually, and took the dog and did a little jog. Her jog ends about where the barbecue smell begins once we pass <laughs> that ice house. She is pulling on the leash to get over there. Sounds like Martin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's hard to tell her no. It's hard to tell Martin no. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you've ever told me no. <laughs> oh, All right, man. fellas. So obviously tongue in cheek, we come to you in mourning. We come to you in sadness. Uh, we have a lot of uh, junk to talk about tonight. Obviously, you know, we'll throw in as much positive as we can. Uh, we always do because we want to celebrate the great news of the day, there's maybe one or two things we can throw out there, but we got to be honest. We have to come to you and share the truth, which is um, frog ball is struggling. Uh, they are on the struggle bus. They rode the struggle bus to and from Stillwater this weekend. And it's been a rough ride in conference play so far. Um, it's been a disaster of epic proportions unmitigated <laughs> worst case scenario i think in by one second here i actually think that might be accurate ray if you think about it may uh, actually by the numbers according to the science it very very well could be a okay. worst case unmitigated disaster all right so i meant to look this up before but i just quickly did um do you remember last year when we were kind of going through the same issues, but a lot of it was in non-conference, right? So that might give you a hint to my question. Do you remember what our record was in conference after three weeks last year when all hell was breaking loose and it was fire this person and bench this person? What was our record after three was, weeks? Well, it was pretty good because we swept Kansas the second uh, week of Big 12 okay. play. Um, yep. We didn't really hit our rough, rough, rough patch until the end of April. Martin hinted at this last week I mean, because he talked about the first two weekends, I want to say, of conference okay. play. We'll get, we'll get like six conference wins, something like that. We're five and four. We had a winning conference record last year after three <clears throat> weeks. Yeah. After losing two of three in Lubbock. And, <laughs> Ray, I don't know, man. That was a pretty down weekend coming back from Lubbock. No, no, Lubbock was definitely a down weekend, but uh, the look at the end of April when you drop two of three to Wilmington, you lose yeah. to Lamar, you get yeah, sure. It, by, it, the uh, West Virginia series was definitely, you know, rock bottom, but, but also everything that 
led up before that too. Yeah, uh, but that also included. Um, let's see, we had a loss. We got our asses kicked by Texas State. We dropped a game to San Diego. We lost a game to UTA. Lost a game to what turned out to be a bad Louisville team. Lost a series to a bad Florida State team. So a lot of the issues last year were non-conference. And uh, as MK said, non-conference is not the problem this year. No, but it's funny, you know, baby. We the, the uh, season, we kind of bemoaned the, 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 the midweek the games last year. You know, we talked about how bad we were in our in our Tuesday, you know, matchups, and the fact that we couldn't beat. I mean, DBU is one thing, but you know, when you're talking, you know, the other non-conference games, you're Lamar they, lost the game yeah. to Lamar. That's right. Mm. Mm. Man, it was, but look, if if you can pull it together in conference play, you know, you can right a lot of wrongs in non-conference, but man, we got the opposite problem this year. It's worse. It's worse than last year. Disaster. And that's after the best start in program history, all that. Uh, Martin really enjoyed your State of the Union last week. It didn't help. Well, it resounded with one guy. Yeah. Yeah. One guy listened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't that wild to have the best program and start, you know, in history and then have the worst or at least tie the worst it's, in conference history? It's baffling. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how that, don't know and, how that even happens. And look, okay. I, we didn't talk about any format or anything tonight. I'm really okay. Skipping individual game recaps. We can talk about individual games as they come up. Yep. Or we can just freaking rant for as long as we want. Uh, I mean, we definitely got to talk about Friday individually, but yeah, of course. Point- I just mean just not in the structured setting that we That's usually fine. do. Yeah. I think I think there are a couple things that came out of each game that might be yeah. worth bringing up because they bring up bigger points. Yeah. Yes. So I agree. if we if we would just want to jump into Tuesday night, bark in the park, the frogs win, they take care of business. Um, one thing we saw was a nice night from Brody Green. Went two for three with a double. Uh, we would not see him the rest of the weekend. I think that's a thing that we want to mention at least. Um, yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah. Do we have any official news? Um, I mean, well, nothing official, not official, but it's true. Anything that we can talk, anything that we can go on the air with on the record. Uh, yeah. Uh, so did you notice on Friday, the lineup came out like 10 minutes before the game? Is that because of Brody? Yeah. So he was. In the lineup, he slipped on the tarp, I think I was told. Oh, and fantastic. Um, and so he was a late scratch, and Jack Arthur was put in the game. Um, he re-injured his groin, and he might have hurt something else. So he's going to be out at least one month. Well, glad we had that great game on Tuesday. That freaking sucks. <clears throat> Uh, Jeez, yeah, um, I do. I, I really do want to talk about Brody Green because, you know, he's a guy that's been here for, you know, two years, sat on the bench, didn't. I mean, he never complained about not playing. He was sitting behind one of the greatest TCU hitters of all time. Um, and, you know, he worked really hard in the fall and was playing the best baseball probably of his life. And it really sucks that he hurt himself twice. Yeah, uh, Martin, can you clarify if he re-injured his his groin uh, based on the tarp incident, or was that just a separate injury? I mean, I don't I don't think I can clarify. Okay, if there was a difference. Yeah, he had three of our eleven hits on Tuesday. Probably, you know, easily the best offensive weapon of the night. And yeah, I mean, and then, you know, that's just really a guy that you would love to put in the lineup right now. Yeah, to say the least. Right. So, Frogs went up early, thought they could take care of business. It was funny because the Mavs came back and basically tied the game. Um, and then TCU put up a couple, you know, later on, so they took care of business. But, Jacob, I think you were the one in attendance. Mm-hmm. Um, were you impressed with the Frogs' performance on Tuesday night? So, Honestly, it's that part of the season where midweek games to me. Speaking of dogs, that ain't mine. Bark in the park is <laughs> bark in the park. <laughs> On cue. Um, it's yeah. that part of this, it's that part of the season where a midweek game against UTA doesn't really do much for me. You know, it's it, like 
non-conference game early in the season. You just want to see the team play regardless of who they're playing. Um, I didn't learn anything on Tuesday. If I hadn't promised my dog that I was going to take her, I probably wouldn't have gone. So, yeah, they won. Um, it was a lot of fun being out there with all the dogs. But as far as, you know, anything impactful with TC baseball, um, it was great to have Brody Green back and yeah. have him perform. And now that's a – let's just scratch that note off now. Yeah, I was also there on Tuesday. Um, honestly, I think that game said more about UT Arlington than it did TCU. Um, Agreed. I mean, we, we beat them easily. But usually, even when – UT Arlington was bad. You'd look over at their dugout and they're, you know, chirping and and jumping up and down and screaming. I mean, it was a what four three game at one point. Like usually they ride that momentum and they're so loud or whatever, and maybe they end up losing by two runs. But um, man, that dugout was dead. Yeah, it's, yeah. I don't know if they were scared of dogs or what, but they. <laughs> They just wanted to get out of there, which is weird because, you know, they just fired their head coach. This is like his second year. This guy's supposed to be good and building a program. I don't know. It doesn't look very promising. Were they I say, um, and paying their respects to TCU's awful conference play start? Um, I, I will shout out the TC baseball operations for one, allowing the dogs it was really cool. And the in-game production, I don't know if it came across on the TV, but when we got like two strikes with two outs in an inning, they'd play like a doorbell sound to get all the dogs barking. <laughs> That's a great on the uh, on the on the stream, it, it, I felt like you could hear like squeaky toys happening yes. quite often. Yeah, okay, as well. so it was either yeah, it was a di- it was different bits, That's right? Awesome. Either either like dog dog toys or a doorbell, or and all the dogs go berserk with two strikes <laughs> and two outs in the inning. That's a good. So that bit. was pretty cool. That is incredible, yeah. actually. That's awesome. I mean, yeah, we've been asking for it for a couple of years, so we're glad they came finally came through with that. That's pretty. Should fun. we take credit? We should. <laughs> life, here, life here on the pot. <laughs> they won't give it. They won't give it to us, but we, we should. Why not? It doesn't matter. I'm gonna go ahead and hang the banner right yeah. behind me. But uh, uh, just you know, just in closing on that game, it was like, cool. Okay, let's go to Stillwater and let's save our season, right? It was the exact same vibe I got the midweek before uh, uh, Oklahoma. So. Yeah. At, yeah. Went, had a yeah. good win at DBU, hosting Oklahoma, feeling good, uh, you know, rolling in and taking care of business against UTA. And it's like, hey, let's go win a couple games in Stillwater. Um, Friday night turned out to be that one win. Frogs head up there. And Peyton Tolley was the star of the show. Uh, goes a full Dude. nine inning complete game shutout. With reportedly, per uh, Mama Tolly, 95 to 100 friends and family in attendance. He is from Bethany, Oklahoma, which is just over an hour away from Stillwater. And she was not there, unfortunately. She was she actually had spent time that day uh, with her other son who plays baseball. So we're hoping to get a uh, little Tolly, uh, you know, in the pipeline coming up. But a lot of people there to cheer him on and what an incredible night for him to give up five hits, zero runs. The frogs, I mean, only score one run on two hits. It wasn't an offensive, uh, you know, beat down, but they took care of business and, you know, just an awesome night for, for Peyton and his, his uh, crew. I was been, at dinner the majority of the night. So I want to hear y'all's thoughts on kind of watching the game. I've been watching baseball a really, really long time. And I've, I can't think of a game where one guy single-handedly won the game like that. I mean, you literally got production from nobody else on the entire team. I mean, he pitched he pitched the distance, so you can't say like a reliever came in and closed the door in the ninth and pitched in. You know, no no fault of anybody, but you can certainly fault that freaking offense for you know it, it was funny listening to the Oklahoma State broadcasters. I don't know, it was around the seventh inning or so. And they said they have the approach at the plate like one run is enough. Like they did their job. They got their one run and it's over. And now it's all on Tolly to finish this thing off. Man, that was coming from the that's coming from an outside perspective, watching our guys at the plate saying they look like they they got their one run and they've closed up shop for the night. Yeah, it's wild, dude. I mean, you play a game where our our last hit in the ball game came in the fifth inning. 
and Tolly still somehow <laughs> willed us across the finish line. It's a incredible performance from him. Man. God, and I felt so bad for him in the eighth inning when you know the wind was blowing in, right? And he left a pitch a little bit up. The guy put a good swing on it and totally doubled down like he had just lost the game for the team, right? He like bent over, like you could just see how sick he felt leaving that pitch up. Like he could not make one mistake all night. That was the pressure that he was feeling. Dude, I thought Perk, uh, Perk texted us after the game and asked a really good question. How many games have been won on a sacrifice foul out? That's what I'm saying. That was I mean, the, it was an unearned run. It was an unearned run. That was the game where they they loaded the bases with no outs in the first mm-hmm. and the second inning? Yeah. I do, yeah, they, they loaded it up twice. I mean, that's yeah. we've done that a couple times this year now. Yeah. And then that pit, that same pitcher ends up going, what, into the eighth inning? Yeah. He, went, he, he went seven full innings. He, yeah. he had a great night as well. He only gave up, what, two hits and – one run uh, that was unearned. But we're um, beyond would you have ever have guessed that that pitcher would have pitched seven full innings after he loaded the bases twice <laughs> in the first two innings. Well, you saw it um, happen against Kansas. Like we're beyond the point of yeah. just, man, you got to, yeah. you got to tip your cap to the pitcher. Like he just right. really <laughs> Garcia good. threw like, like, yeah, you Garcia threw like almost 50 pitches, I think through two innings. And then I don't know if it's tipping down. my cap more than, no, I'm just, I know, a, I know. I know that's not what you're saying. A statement but, on the offense. Yeah, no, like, remember we had, we talked about this after Kansas where it was like, boy, but their pitching is just really good, you know? I'm I'm tired of saying that. I'm tired of giving that, you know, analysis for every game where the offense just doesn't show up. Every pitcher we face is on the um, Golden Spikes Award watch list, so that, that tells you something. Yeah. <laughs> and and this goes for like this doesn't just go for Friday. This goes for the whole weekend, and you can even extend it into UTA a little bit. So um, frogs get or well, totally gets the D one you know baseball pitcher of the week. I think that it. well deserved, well earned. Um, not that was not a team effort. We can say that no, <laughs> that was not an individual uh, masterpiece of a performance and. Have- have you ever seen a guy like take the ball and say, I'm not going to let y'all lose this game for me? I mean, that's kind of what I said, right? Yeah. Max Duggan, but different sport. Same energy, though. Yeah. Um, good for good for Peyton, you know, after yeah. going I mean, it's, four it's, innings, five innings, six at all. here and there. I mean, and also – I don't, I don't know what the conversations were around leaving him in, but I love that. I just absolutely love it that they let him have that have that experience. So mm-hmm. it was probably yeah. totally telling him, "I'm good, I'm good, yeah. I want the ball." Telling Kirk between innings, you know, it's not only that, you know, it's his family and friends in the stands. Uh, Oklahoma State was his childhood team. Mm-hmm. I mean, show him up a little bit. I was still surprised though they let him go. They let him go up distance. I, we were doing Asher's uh, birthday dinner with family Friday night. I kept looking over and seeing what inning we were in. Like, oh, Tolly's Tull- still pitching. Look back a little later. Oh, look at that. Tolly's Tull- still pitching. And uh, yeah, that was awesome, dude. dude. I was highlight of my weekend outside of uh, Asher's birthday, to say the least. I was, yeah, happy birthday to your boy, one years old. Um, Big one, baby. Sorry, I couldn't make it. I was out of town all weekend. But I did oh. catch this game from the hotel room. And I was fired up because I was like, dude, this is what can turn a season around. Mm-hmm. 100%. It this 100% exactly did not about. turn a season around. So, this is exactly and, what we've been talking about, though, like looking for from Tully. Like when we're talking when we had Perk on. This, is, that, this was the exact kind of key performance we've all been looking for out of him. Per- perfect out of transition him. into – the next game because I felt the exact same way you did Garrett and, and uh, Jacob that watching that game, you're like, okay, we've had a terrible non-conference, you know, so far, but this is it. This is where the team figures it out. Um, Frogs try to take the series on Saturday. They don't. Um, they had one base runner until the seventh inning one. <clears throat> they put up a couple runs after that. Not, not enough. Um, Cole Klecker gets drilled early again. 
Um, and the, the, the OSU's pitcher, Brian Holiday, not our Brian Holiday in our TCU Hall of Fame, a different Brian Holiday, goes a complete game himself, kind of matching Tolley's performance. Um, at one point in the game, over three separate innings against the Frogs, he threw 20 total pitches. I mean, it was kind of a – I mean, again, the same thing that happened Friday night in terms of not hitting. Uh, yes, the Frogs got four hits, but that was it. Four total hits on the night. And that's a miracle. A it's a miracle pretty, they got to pretty, four. Pretty miserable um, offensive showing. The Frogs lose six to two. So Dude. you guys Whenever gave me you guys gave me a ton of crap because I watched I watched Klecker give up his patented game changing three run home run that he does every start. I watched them look completely overmatched one time through the order, and I've turned my TV back on March Madness. I said I'd, I've seen all I need to see from this game, like. This is, it's how it's, it, nothing's going to change in this game. And you guys were really hard on me for that, but I feel a little bit vindicated. By That's the time what we should be. <laughs> there, is, there is no vindication. Okay. I mean, I, look, I, I think with, so here, with I, these, there were some fire I, March Madness games going on and I wanted to enjoy my entertainment time for the day. And it I wasn't watching you. a strikeout. 37 times jacob this in came in the second inning that's why i think why we were pushing back no it was so after fight. the you know it was definitely after the third inning because i watched them go one time through the order and i said they they might get no hit oh i gotta be yeah, I mean, that. yeah when did yeah? you make well, those bet it, it was <laughs> after around, the third inning it was around that time and i, I said I, if i can if i it, not that i actually wanted them to get no hit but right. oh, they weren't going to win the game it. i might as well get a hundred dollars out of it if i said if we could get through logan maxwell there in the what seventh inning i said logan maxwell is like the one one bad like at bat i have left and yeah he broke it up so yeah i owe you a beer mk but i enjoyed watching march madness rather than us how many times do we strike out in this game 14 14 strikeouts yep mm. And and I'm like, okay, even if the I'm not trying to be hard on Kleck or anything, but you have to do what Tolly did if you want to win right now. And that was over in the first inning. Dude, yeah, they had two innings where one inning they saw six pitches. And didn't they follow that up the next inning by seeing like eight? It's <laughs> I I have no answers. They're they're not selling out for power and striking out. They're not trying to work walks. They're swinging at bad pitches with weak swings. It makes no sense. I've never seen a team at TCU look so inept at the plate. I know we're talking about offense right now, but can can I talk about Klecker for a second? Sure. Um, so I've obviously we saw him last year and and we've watched him this year, and it feels like you know, watching him, it feels like he has had a worse outing so far right over the season and so i wanted to look at that a little bit closer um because so i went in biased uh, you know thinking that he would be struggling significantly more than last year mm -hmm. so a few things um <clears throat> this year he is averaging 4.2 innings per outing 4.2 okay in 2023 over 19 games he was averaging five innings so not significantly more, maybe an inning or, you know, a couple, two thirds of an inning more. Um, hits and runs. He is giving up more runs this year, 4.1 compared to 5.8. So more runs this year. Okay. I'm uh, sorry. That's hits. Uh, runs is, is just one more run per outing compared to last year. Here's where I found it interesting. In 19 games last year, he gave up 17 home runs. I don't remember that, that being an issue. Um, he's given up seven so far. So if you extrapolate that over the entire season, you're talking about 22 home runs. And the pace is very close. The difference mm -hmm. is, the difference is his ERA last year was 3.77. This year it's 6.38. Uh, against Florida Gulf Coast. I don't know if you guys remember the third inning. He gave up back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back home runs. Against Kansas, he was pulled in the sixth because he, he gave up back-to-back -back home runs. 
against Oklahoma last weekend, he was pulled in the fifth because of, because he gave up a three run home run. And then Oklahoma State, he gave up a three home run in the first inning. His pitching has been relatively close to last year in terms of overall performance, but he did not give up three home, you know, three, three run home runs or back to back home runs or back to back to back last year. That's not something he did. Um, it's, it's really frustrating because you're looking at, and I know we've talked about this in our group chat, a couple pitches here and there have changed his entire season. And I don't know if the answer is to pull him into a different, you know, uh, uh, you know, setting, and, but his outings have been very similar when you look at the big picture. It's just that his ERA is getting drilled. It also hurts whenever you're losing these games too, right? Well, that too. But I, the, the reason I brought that up was if we had any run support whatsoever, I'm not sure if we would be worried about Klecker at all. Because yeah. he, look, he looks so similar to 2023. That I think that was kind of my point. Is I went into this thinking, wow, he's going to look. He's not pitching the same as last year. He's a different guy. I don't think he's actually that much different. His walks per game are lower. His strikeouts are higher. You know, in terms of adding, like he. So he's he's not the, he's the same guy. He's not getting the support behind the plate. Well, sounds like the same guy that's just living in the strike zone and missing his spots in the zone and getting punished for it. Like what you're saying, though, MK, I mean, the, the spotlight is going to be on those mistakes a lot more when you don't have any run support and we're not sitting here talking about how the Frogs won with a 3-4 run margin, right? Um, whenever, you, whenever your bats aren't doing anything, uh, and you give up a you give up you get a big dinger like that. That's going to become a lot more important than maybe would have later on in the discussion on a different podcast. Had we had we won that ball game convincingly through some help on the offensive side. MK, I don't know if he, in your research you have it pulled up or handy. I wonder what the run support was that he got in those games that he pitched last year, as opposed to what he's getting in games pitched this year. That was my next thing I was going to look at in terms of game to game, but you know, my time ran out. Um, I was doing this in the middle of a meeting that was important, <laughs> <laughs> looking at only only his stuff so far. Um, so yeah, I didn't I didn't get to the offensive side. And then I also wonder what his pitch count is in these games. Cause I would imagine that his would he would have a lower pitch count last year as opposed to this year? Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, I mean that that's the thing. It it I I in my mind I'm thinking Cole was our guy. He's going seven eight innings last year. He never did that. His longest outing in 2023 was seven innings. That was the longest. His average was five innings. He was a he was never expected or never the 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 guy to go you know to do a complete game. He you know and um. So I, I, it feels I think towards worse. Towards the end of the going. year, he was. Man, I was thinking maybe his walks were higher this year, but it's pretty much the same too. No, they're they're lower. Yeah, it's yeah. a little lower. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think Ray might be right about that. He's living in the strike zone and missing his spots because he's always been hit. He's always been hit. Now he's getting hit harder. And so he's getting fewer outs. He's giving more home runs. Um, he's going uh, shorter into ball games. Yeah, and that, that that was kind of my fear about Klecker coming into the season was him being hittable. But it looked like after UCLA and after uh, who was it? He had two good starts at oh, Arizona State. He had two good starts in a row. It looked like okay, well. You know, I don't need to be worried about Klecker anymore. But it's just really like a few bad pitches here or there every outing, and they just happen to kill us. Yeah, and we talked about it before with Perk, you know, with him missing. The, he didn't pitch in the summer. He missed the fall. A uh, guy like that who has to have movement on his pitches. Because, um, I mean, he was pretty much out until, what, opening weekend? So, you know, it's going to take him time to get – 
that back to be that guy to get the movement on those pitches. Yeah, and if you notice where he's missing, like last year, he lived down in the zone. Everything was down, down, down. This year, he's missing up, 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 and he is being crushed for it. So you actually think that his pitches are different, not that there's more film on him, there's more research on you know how to prepare for him? No, I think he's just missing where he – he's not throwing the ball where he wants it to go. Especially on his secondary pitches. I mean, he's hanging curveballs that are extremely hittable. But it's not, like, consistent throughout the start. It just seems to be one inning in every start. <laughs> That's the thing. One inning. Doesn't it feel like yeah. there's one bad inning every game for the Frogs on defense where they just – they drop the entire game and then their offense can't make that up afterwards. Well, that's kind of, that's kind of really the key. I mean, it doesn't matter if he's going to have a bad inning when you're not going to score any runs anyway. And yeah. like, you're going to have to have totally performances right now or just at, try to outlast their bullpen. Like we did against Kansas and just hit the bottom of their bullpen on Sunday. Um, in an ideal world, I would like to have, the option to put him in midweeks just to so that he can go longer in the games and maybe he can start hitting his spots. But you really can't do that right now because nobody's stepping up to pitch on the weekends. Well, I mean, and we lost we lost Kyle Ayers now. Yeah. Or Obviously the, the the huge is a um, the huge uh issue is the offense, but I mean, the pitching hasn't been very good either in conference play. We're like middle of the pack. Even with Tolley's uh, complete game shutout. All right. Let's take a quick break. Um, we are struggling. And you know what happens when I'm struggling? I want to grab a nice long, ice cold, long drink. Tonight, I've got yeah, the uh, the Legend of 1952, the peach flavor. Boy, is it delicious. I mean, it just it goes down so smooth. Um, nice springtime treat. Besides yeah. the peach, you guys have tried the other flavors. Anything that sticks out to you uh, in terms of uh, your favorite? Well, these last couple of weekends, I've needed that strong boy, the, the black can. Yeah, I'm surprised you're not drinking your patented sugar-free. Me? Yeah, I had a couple uh, out of a pack. I've, I've I've got packs for you guys to pick up. I know, you know man. I'm uh, yeah. We've been we've been on the road too long. I, I mean, need to get long Dallas, enough. bro. Leave them yeah. long enough, and uh, <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna be gone. So <laughs> I know. I, I really could. I wish I had some long drink right now. That'd appreciate nice. uh, appreciate long drink for sponsoring the pod. Um, all right, we talked about a pretty uh, rough offensive outing so far, game one and two. Um, we'll jump into the third game, which was more of the same, unfortunately. Uh, I think the biggest disappointment in this game, and, and maybe we start here, is Louis Rodriguez. He looked fine, looked great uh, to start the game. We were yeah. very excited to have him finally get his weekend start. And the freaking weather in Stillwater um, uh, didn't let that happen. Uh, Martin, you were there. Uh, could you not hold some umbrellas up or something like what, what was the deal there so at the beginning of the game um you notice so when we well we scored one run in the first and the second inning and then louis was like one two three in both the first and the second inning so when we were on offense it was raining and then when it was stop raining and we'd get our third out and then louis would come out and pitch you know three clean batters and you know get back in the dugout and start raining again and I think I think we scored a run off a pass ball, and I think it was in the second inning. Yeah, we did. And it was and that, uh, that was uh, a tough one too because they've got that stupid brick. Yeah. Behind there, and that ball bounced right back to the catcher. Up until that point, it had really just been raining when Oklahoma State was pitching, and then when it really started, and and Luis gave. Lewis gave up, uh, what was it, three hits in a row? It was like yeah. pouring, and then it they stopped the game. Kind of wish they would have stopped the game before those three hits came. 
Yeah, I mean, the first inning was good, and he gets the first two outs in the second inning, but he really started to waver there with two outs. So I'm not so sure that, you know, Oklahoma State wouldn't put up more runs if the game hadn't been stopped. Yeah, they. I mean, they probably would have, but it, the rain was definitely having an effect on his That's pitching. True. I think so. That's true. But, you know, uh, <laughs> we're going to beat the dead horse. I mean, I'm looking at TCU's um, – inning by inning offense, you know, play chart. And it's strike out, strike out, fly out, strike out, ground out, strike out, strike out, fly out, ground it. Uh, it's just one, two, three innings for the rest of the day. Yeah. So Friday we had what? Two hits for the entire game. Um, yeah. Saturday we had two hits until like the eighth inning or something. I think we got a, another hit or two. And yep. then same thing on Sunday. We had two hits until like the ninth inning and we got two more hits or whatever. And it's like, we're not going to win any games if for 100 or 90% of the time we only have two hits. That's the thing. The the pitchers, I mean, Braden Sloan came in after the 90-minute delay. He actually got those runners out, you know, that were on base before the delay happened. Um, and he gave up some more, but you're down 6-2. to two. That's not insurmountable. You've got plenty of time to to figure it out, you know. And Well, and after the third, it's 4-2. to two. That's let's what I'm saying. Let's, let's go hit. Let's let's get let's get one or two back here in this next inning. You know, exactly. Just, let's stay in the game. After the second inning, the frogs managed three hits for the rest of the game. All of them were singles. All right, and that was it. That that's the reason they lost right there. Yeah, I mean, there's no point in saying anything negative about pitching at all. Yeah, for as bad as the broadcast was. For Oklahoma State over the weekend, uh, they were saying, man, uh, this Oklahoma State pitcher, whoever it was that came in after the rain delay, this is the best he's ever looked. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. not good. I was uh, I grew more frustrated with the broadcast over the weekend, but I realize now that I was mad at the Frogs and trying to take it out on some you know, garbage that they were, they, they just kept. Oh, chatting. no, it was still a bad, a bad broadcast. It was a Tom bad broadcast. Holiday but is not a good broadcaster. It, Tom it wasn't a great sucks. broadcast, but the frogs sucked more. That's the, th yeah. that's the thing. Had they been winning, I wouldn't have cared what they said. Like, exactly. I, I wouldn't. Exactly. I mean, I, I don't, we're trying to podcast right now and I have nothing to say because it's, it's just so bad. And it's not like you can pinpoint an issue. Like, man, they're striking out so much because they're selling out for power. They're not – their swings are – they look like they're swinging for contact and not making any. Yeah, you're – you say that we're – so we're second to last in strikeouts. So, oh, maybe we're selling out for power. Well, we're third to last in home runs too. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, oh. yeah. You talk about the strikeouts. You look at the weekend as a whole. TCU strikes out 37 times over the weekend. You only have 81 outs. That is dang near 50% of your outs are via the strikeout. I think it was, I think it was 39, right? I think it was yeah, 39. 39? Oh, even worse. Yeah. And I mean, it's like they'll get up in the count 2 1 and then ground out to second. Yeah. I mean, it was. <laughs> um, the guy that pitched on Saturday, Brian Holiday, uh, he's for sure their best pitcher. Um, the other guys, I mean, it's really hard to say if they were good or not, just based off of our performance the last three weeks. And speaking of, we ranked dead last in the Big 12 in batting average in conference games. Um, we are 10th yeah. in on-base percentage and 12th in slugging. Are you looking at overall or? Yeah, let me. Hmm. It's worse than just in conference. No, conference. Hold on. Let me click the conference stat only button. Um, Martin. Yeah, dead. So with, with boots on the ground, what what's going on in Stillwater on Sunday? I mean, nobody's hitting the ball hard. That's pretty much it. I mean, dude, they could have thrown it underhand, and I, I think we still ground out to second. Um, and we, <laughs> and you know, watching it Friday, you know they they have Garcia throwing like hundred and thirty something pitches, and I'm like, they don't need to do that. They can bring in whoever and. He can get us out just as good. Dude, yeah, a lot of those uh, grounders, too, the reason we were able to get on base was because they couldn't throw the ball to first base. Because it was raining. 
between well that and on uh, Friday too, they had a couple of throwing errors to first base. So conference only, we're twelfth in on base percentage and twelfth in slugging. Want to guess who the only team worse than us is? Because it's the same team in thirteenth in both. Cincinnati. Maybe. Nope, they're eleventh. Uh, UCF. Cincinnati's actually fourth in on base percentage, but they're eleventh in on in slugging. It's the most pathetic team in the conference. Any more Baylor? Texas. Anyone? Baylor? Houston. Baylor. Uh, Baylor. Baylor. Uh, Which, by the way, we, we are because... we are very close to passing them for thirteenth. I mean, it is like razor thin margins. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I have a question about the lineups. Obviously, they make small tweaks each game, each series. Is there anything significant that you guys would do to – not not that they're going to hit better, but just, hey, this isn't working out, so let's figure this out. Well, that's the thing, man. You can't even, like, pinpoint it to a few guys here or there. It's, it's one through nine. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I mean you want to replace one through nine? I mean, I don't know. I don't have any answers. It's frustrating. Logan, Logan's the only one that's like <laughs> okay, fine. Like, I'll hey. give you Logan. Yeah, and everybody Logan, else is fucking. Yeah. Crazy. So, and, so they, and that's the one Logan gets on about. base. When Logan gets on base, pinch hit for Logan, and he can bat again. <laughs> <laughs> I think we talked it about what we changed in this lineup a week ago. Like, well, sure, would like to see Logan in the leadoff role. I feel like that's a good location for him to be. Well, that that's okay. happening now. That's and that's great. We're still not getting hits though. One so nine. then who? So, so if, the guy if, that if lost his wanna, lead up, lead up, lead, you know, lead up rolls Chatnier, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. If you do want to individualize this, I mean, are we going to look at Ryder Robinson or Sam Myers or Chase Brunson, like the freshman? Like, hey, uh-huh. freshman, step it up. Hey, Carson Bowen, where are you? Anthony Silva, Curtis Byrne, what are you doing? You've you've played a lot of college baseball. Peyton Chatnier, fifth year. What are you doing? Work, work a walk, work a freaking walk. These, you know? uh, I got seven guys who are regulars in the lineup. This is just in conference play. Peyton Chatnier, four for thirty-seven. Ouch, oh, Jesus. Oh, Runston, God. four for twenty-nine. Carson oh, Bowen, insane. five for twenty-nine. Ryder Robinson, five for twenty-nine. Silva six for twenty eight, Sam Meyer six for twenty five, and Curtis seven for thirty seven. Okay, I'm so- not puking because of the long drink. This is purely <laughs> separate. This is a different deal. <laughs> no. That's only Ray. Ray. <laughs> He's for the average for those seven guys, one seventy three in conference. Dude, at what point do you yeah. look at your bench and say, "Okay, Micah Kendrick. Okay, Jake Dewar. Okay, Gabe Miranda." I mean. You try those guys. They can't be any worse than what we're seeing. No, no I would say if we had a midweek, I would bench as many regulars as possible and get some new guys some at bats. And if any of them show any sign of life in the midweek, then you're starting them again. Who, who the hell do we even play? This? Houston? This is a, Houston. This is a really strange problem to have. Like we've never. I mean, I don't remember a team where nobody is like Logan. Yes, okay, Logan's probably still probably hitting over three hundred. Nobody else is producing. That's that's a weird thing to talk about because it's not like you can go, hey, Luke Boyers, you're not doing great in the football, right. so move him down. Nobody is figuring it out, you know? Right. Mm-mm. Was that 2018 yeah, dude, offense pretty bad? I have to go back and look, but no, I, I'm telling you, I can say this there's without no even way. looking at it. No, there's no way they're worse than this team. <laughs> in conference. <laughs> um. All right, but okay. So if you can't blame um, any individuals, like, yeah, we can rant at the upperclassmen to step up, the veterans, right? But it's not like they forgot how to play baseball. They're all extremely talented. It's not like, man, we just got to recruit better. We got to get better players. We have the players. Mm -hmm. That's the question question I wanted to ask is, sorry, I I, I talked about everybody everybody not hitting, but Usually you you see a couple guys slumping. That happens all year long. Sure. Right. But other guys guys slump all year long. How how often have you seen multiple guys that are in that same boat where it's like, is that is that is that contagious where you're like Yeah, yeah. So let's 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 go back to before conference play started and Silva and Bowen and Curtis were struggling, right? But 
we were getting picked up by Chase Brunson, Sam Myers, and other guys on a particular game, right? And the optimism was, okay, it, the criticism was, TC's playing some close games, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, all right, well, what happens when our best players start playing like our best players? Well, they haven't done it yet. And now the now the freshmen are struggling. So now you have this whole system-wide failure to produce offense. Yeah, you're exactly right. And I, I'm not going like, to sit here and put it on the shoulder, the shoulders of those freshmen to keep that rate of success up that was right. sustaining us through those non-conference games. Uh, Martin, you said that core group of seven guys were batting what? 173? Is that what it was? So that's insane, dude, because the team right now as a whole is batting 193. So, so that's a little better. And that's still last place. I, I, don't, it's, I, don't, I don't understand. And, and now, MK, to answer your question, I, I – I don't even know how to how to how to address it. Like I don't know what talking points you can even really have when it's it's one through nine. It feels like who just don't know what they're doing. Uh, maybe it goes back to what we talked about. What was it last week, Ray? When you kind of you brought up how hard it just felt like everybody was pressing, trying to do too much at to the plate. Is are they? I, so I'm wondering, is it that? <laughs> it doesn't look know. like they're pressing. It, just, it looks like they're just kind of lost. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, loss I think is something different than pressing. Um, I, yeah. So which one it, of those is it? I think they're lost. It looks like nobody has any idea. It, it's really weird because it looks like they're up there guessing, trying to figure out what the guy's going to throw instead of going up there with a plan. Hey, look for this pitch. If I get this pitch, let me hit this pitch because it, they're not hitting anything hard. I don't I whatever hits they are getting. It looks like they're doing it by accident. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Yeah, so. that's what uh, pressing, you know, pressing these last couple of weeks, especially in the Oklahoma series, has turned into your lost. It's upgraded. It's like it's like you started off trying to just to to, to force action, make something happen to play on slumping. I need I, I need to I need to produce something here to shit shit. Nothing's happening. But oh shit! The, but but Garrett, and, and now it's just lost. But Gary, I, I can't even say it's that because they'll go up there and just look at strikes. Because so yeah. they're not, you know, it's it's every it's to me. If you want to just simplify it, it's a confidence thing. Like it's like they're out as soon as they step in the box. It's like, well, here yeah. we go again. Here comes another out. And it seems like, like every, every you now everybody's dealing with that confidence issue at the same time. Right, and and when you see the guy in front of you strike out for the third time in a game, and it's like, man. Okay, well, I guess it's my turn to suck. And then you step you in the button. You're already <laughs> defeated. And then and then it works on the reverse end when the pitchers are like, man, we can get some – there's outs to be had in this lineup. Like, I can go up there, stand on that mound tall, you know. Go and to have the outside most corner every game. single time. <laughs> yeah. Miss it. Like, I don't have to worry about making a mistake because they won't hit it anyway. Yeah, that was the ball. big thing with uh, Garcia on Friday. You know, everybody was – Hyping him up because he, you know, he's only allowed one run through what seven innings. But I was like, dude, it's throwing middle, middle. Like he should be getting rocked right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so you can't blame it on an individual or even a small group of individuals. you you can't blame it on lack of talent and say, Man, we just gotta hit the portal, we gotta recruit. Okay. So do you blame it on coaching? Well, it's the same coaches that got us to Omaha last year. Same, I don't think they're telling them to do the opposite of what the team last year did. Like, I think this just falls on the entire group of individuals in the lineup. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure if I went on Horn Frog Blitz and there ain't no damn way I'm going on Horn Frog Blitz right now, but I'm sure it's full of fire <laughs> TJ Bruce. They just need to do. Were we not in Omaha last, last year? Were we not in Omaha right. last year? Right. What week was it last year where they had that? Team meeting where everybody sat in the room together and before the DBU game. We need to do After that after West again. Virginia. Right. So that That's brings me to my next point. I would not be Jesus shocked. In the clubhouse. I would not be shocked that if in seven days we're doing this podcast and TCU has put up ten runs, eight runs, and twelve runs against Houston this right. weekend. Like it can flip just like that. It did last year. It can flip again. We're just in a worse spot this year. Um, we we can go there whenever we're 
You know, well, I kind of want to go back. Uh, so Martin was talking about to kind of single out Chatnier. Um, he had sent some stats to the group text earlier today about his uh, his season as a total. If you look at his conference strikeouts and walks, he's walked three times and struck out 10. For the season, he has 19 walks and 21 strikeouts on the year. So that means in non-conference games, he's walked 16 times and only struck out 11. How does a switch get flipped that bad where it goes so in one the opposite direction? It's a great know. question. I don't know. It, it, maybe it's what Jake was talking about. It's At this point, it's became a confidence issue. I mean, because like you said, the, the coaching is the same. The talent's there. I, I don't know what else could be could be leading to those results, especially for a guy like Shad who's been playing baseball for like 12 years in college at this point. Yeah, it, it's baffling, man. I think I've actually found – one of the issues um i'm gonna read off a tweet from our friend at pipkin underscore dylan 14. can somebody please bite the bullet and pick against the frogs just yeah. to see if we can turn it around <laughs> dude i'm i'm telling you i was so close in picking against uh, them this week but they're yeah. just it's i mean i want i wanted to but then i was like i'm just gonna get shit on you know but all right but if you go to if, if you go to your local sports book tc's favored in every single game yeah it's wild hey and, remember and they're, who, they're 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 minus odds every what, single game what was that what was that um algorithm that was like frogs are favored in every game the entire season it, it was <laughs> more annoying yeah. we simply but, can't lose but have you has there been a game you've tuned into and it's like, man, we're screwed today? No. no. <laughs> so it the logic checks out. Honestly, the closest one was, for me that I felt most nervous about was DBU. I'm like, uh, it's it's in Dallas. We'll probably lose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, that, yeah. and that was probably, if I remember right, that was probably the game where the odds were the closest to a pick them. Oh. But, all right, so... Let me ask you this, just to transition a little bit. Um, West Virginia is 14 and 10. TCU is 17 and 7. But would you take that 14 and 10 record if it meant you were 4 and 2 in conference, like West Virginia is? Yes, because that's what we'd be about. La that's what we were about last year. I, exactly. I, but, right, honestly, though, for, that's a two game difference. I don't know. I, if you're talking about like six wins, maybe, but I feel like yeah. they can still turn it around, and start sweeping some teams that they're not, they shouldn't. So that, that you know? is, that is kind of a bright spot. Like I think they're on life support right now for the conference. I think you're probably looking at just try to finish top five and get yeah. a two seed somewhere. I mm -hmm. think that's probably the most realistic, but Kansas state is sitting at five and one. They've played two conference series. They're in first place. So it's not like it's impossible for them to come back. But, damn, you're going to have to rattle off. Like, Ray, you read the schedule. They have, what, Houston, they, Cincinnati. So they've got – this week they've got three against Houston. Yeah. Then they go to UTA. They've got three against Cincinnati. And then they go uh, – then UT Rio Grande Valley comes here for two. You've got, you're at a I don't point care where you have the, to go nine and zero. I don't care about the midweeks. Tell me about okay. yeah. so you got Houston, Cincinnati, and who? Th then Texas Tech comes here. Yeah, then you got you got to go nine and zero. After, after eight, that, after that, you got Texas, and then yeah, you, you, you got to go nine and zero. You're gonna need nine and zero here for the stretch. And they're and they're extremely capable of doing it. They and they, it's not like we need to score double digit runs every game. We don't. You just gotta say they need to go. You just gotta be one. good, good. Just be good on offense. You don't have to be otherworldly, serviceable. <laughs> yeah, just not where you're striking out in fifty percent of your at bats. Do you all feel that in the non-conference that the offense was carrying them to kind of uh, come back later in games? You know, versus well, they were relying on the freshmen. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it was, I think it was just like a talent differential a lot for a lot of that too. Like when you're just or, that much better than the other teams. You it know? was, yeah, it was either the freshmen were consistently good or you'd get the random good game from Curtis Byrne, Carson Bowen, or Anthony Silva just never on the same day. Yeah. Yeah. I but you're not getting a, a random of... good game from anyone anymore except Logan Maxwell. But Logan Maxwell doesn't hit for power, so it's not like Logan can come up and hit a three-run home run, get you back in a game, or get you ahead in a game. He's going to hit a single or a double. I think it was a lot of what Jacob said in an earlier pod is those teams let you come back into those games with defensive miscues, whereas these you know, Big 12 teams, they're not letting you do that. That's a no-no. Oklahoma State tried. We did try with that little wet ball. Well, we scored our one run on an unearned run on Friday, but still, yeah. that's just one run. You think Oklahoma State is looking at the series thinking, man, if we hadn't blown it on Friday, we'd have swept them. Now, that's right. another thing I wanted to say. Like, we're two and seven, but I think we're a lot closer to 0 and 9 than we are, you know, four and five or I can't really think of any game where it was like, man, we should have had that one. Super you know? close because you look at that Kansas game and yeah, the score is what it is, but they rattled off what seven runs in the ninth inning. Yeah. They were losing most of that game. Yep. Yeah. They just kind of ran out of pitchers. So and do you, do you, can you point to any conference game and say, boy, we just let that one slip away. Like, <laughs> mm -mm. Um, I mean, I mean, we ben, had a comeback ben, against OU, but we didn't Ben we, blow one. No, uh, Saturday against Kansas, there was like a million left on base. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know. but but we we were getting shelled in that game. The pitching was getting shelled. Let me see. I think if um, I think I can quickly I think look if, this if Shetney was allowed to use his bat. Um, on Saturday in that game, I think we would have won that game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fellas, this has been kind of a negative, you know, vibe all night. And it is, it, 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 as well it's, it's, very, be. it's very negative. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to sugarcoat it. We talked about that, you know, like it's not about only looking at the positive stuff. Um, but I also don't want to do this for the next hour, you know, so no, I I'd say we we can just wrap it up whenever that's you want. I mean, to be honest with we, you. Fortunately, I mean, by the grace of God, there's no Tuesday game. Uh, they get a night off, maybe to uh, think about themselves and and meditate, meditate on uh, on all the all the. Do you garbage. think Kirk put them in timeout whenever they got back? Uh, I actually wonder about that. So, without knowing kind of the back you know background of what happens you know on a t on a college team, right? I've got very little experience on a high school team, like. What happens when they come home after a, a series loss? They're two and seven in conference. Uh, I think Mondays, Kirk talked about this on our pod, is those are kind of days off for the players. They get they don't have to, you know, necessarily practice, but maybe they lift weights and that sort of thing. Um, coaches get together on Tuesday morning to kind of talk about the week. What changes would they make not having a Tuesday game, right? They have a Thursday, Friday, Saturday schedule this week because of Easter. So what do you think is happening right now, especially because of the 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 way that the, the um, year has gone so far? Well, I think they have today off, and then they're going to get a nice, good practice in tomorrow and Wednesday, and then re-rack it, try again on Thursday. I think, I mean, I my best guess would be I think the coaches are trying to be as positive as possible, try to build their confidence back up. Like we tried the whole ass chewing thing Sunday against OU didn't really help. I'm sure there's been more since, but I, I just feel like confidence is so low. I think the positive approach would be more fruitful. I think a lot of hitting drills and situational hitting. Less bunting, please. Dude, that was, yeah, that's weird. You know, you're in a bad way when your best hitters trying to bunt to get on base. Was that called? I Probably not, but there was also what, a bump when we were down three runs. Yeah. Sack I thought it was, it was a weird Yeah, move. I mean, bunting for hits is whatever, but sack bunting is, man, I just, I'll disagree with that every time. 
Well, that no, it was a bunch per hit though. There was nobody on base. He was just trying to get on base. No, yeah, so our, uh, he was trying to bump for a hit, but there was a sacrifice bunt when we were down by three oh, runs. Gotcha. Yeah, I missed yeah. that. One. Um, Zach Zach Sim from what's their what's their thing? The left the Texas pod. What is it? Occupy left field. Oh, no, yeah. he's yeah. uh he writes for Orange Bloods. Orange. Okay, fine. Orange Bloods. Um, he said only answer is hold cold. Ha. Hot, cold, hot theory. Yeah, so the question... They're putting that to the test. <laughs> yeah, really was, uh, bring really your are. solutions for the offense, wrong answers only, and hot, cold, hot. If if we're hot, cold, hot, fellas, I'm ready to, I'm ready for the... I mean, that's what I'm saying, right? Like I said, we could be here next Monday talking about how we blew out Houston in three games, and we're so back. Because the talent's there. The coaches, we have the coaching staff. Arguably better than last year with you. You added Dave Lawn, you know, like, yeah, so. um, and Evan Scow and Brian Holiday. We're not saying. Holiday Howard. <laughs> What's the best pie? Apple pie. That's a good mm. answer. Peach. You gotta, you gotta go with Han. percent. Puck Han. That's a good yeah. answer. If. Uh, Man, if I love a, all my children equally, you know. If there's a key lime do. pie on the dessert menu, it's dude, really good. that's a good answer. Well, dude, key lime pie? That's, all, that's a good answer. No, I, I'm with you, MK. I'm oh with you. Oh, that is a trash pie. That's if cool. you do that I, I, apple I, I, pie, though, apple pie I, on the I, hot skillet with the I'm ice cream. I'm ready to fight right now. Dude, I, look, like I said, I love all my children equally. So let's talk. What are the bad pies? Maybe that's a better. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Cheesecake is the best pie. Is that is cheesecake a pie? <laughs> it's, cheese. it's in the name, Martin. It's a cake. No, it's a pie, it's, dude. It kind of has a cakey texture. It's got fruit in it. It's made in a pie tin. What what defines a pie though? Is it the name or the the baking strategy? The <laughs> the baking procedure. A hot dog is a pie. <laughs> a pie is a sandwich. A pie is a sandwich. <laughs> If you, you smash it into half. All right, what are, what are some bad pies? Like, ugh, gross. Le, what, where are you at on lemon Dude. meringue? Rhubarb pie. So sure, the meringue part's kind of weird because it's real thick and – Yeah, it's a bad pie. Lemon meringue? Meringue? Yeah. Meringue? meringue? Yeah. Dude, mer no. meringue has to be right. If, if meringue's right, no, it's a disgusting. great addition to the lineup. But right, it's here, bad meringue. Sweet yeah, potato I, pie. I have, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I have a hot take for you. Chocolate so, pie is a bad pie. I don't it's, disagree. What, how so? It's basically glorified chocolate pudding. I agree. With yeah, you. yeah. It's it's the texture of the chocolate and the, like it's the flavor I mean, with the the texture. It just doesn't go. Like chocolate is awesome in like almost everything except pie. Not a bad take. I okay, don't like I pie that one. without uh, whipped cream or ice cream on top. Okay, so. pie or cake? Pie. Pie, hands down pie. Um, Unless cookie it's cake. a black forest cake. Cookie from, cake uh, sucks. Fuck you. <laughs> cookie cake is the shit. Uh, I only like cookie cake and ice cream. Are you? Cake. Martin's gonna be at Subway getting the foot long cookie cake. Dude, for real, this. like Here's that's what you about... get. That's that's a ten year old birthday. I don't <laughs> go to Subway. <laughs> you don't. Eat... <laughs> Here's the thing about cookie cake: the floor is lower. It like. Because most cookie cakes are dry and gross, the ceiling might be higher if it's like the best cookie cake ever. I, I feel it's, like I see uh, it like a, I think it's a cookie American. cake. Great American. What about a pazuki? A uh, pazuki right. from uh, BJ's. What the hell is that? Where does cobbler what? rank? Where does cobbler, cobbler rank? Cobbler's S tier, dude. I love cobbler. So yeah, cobbler's just cobbler, messy dude. pie, isn't it? Cobbler's, I mean, okay, just, cobbler or pie? It's just cobbler. messy pie. You just it's it's it a different. Messy. Okay, it's all right. So you're looking at. You have key lime pie, and then you have a cobbler next to it. Which one? Do if you, you have a key lime cobbler and a key lime pie, it's the same. Crap. You're not getting key lime cobbler. That'd be, getting, it'd be like it'd be uh, like hot, like a, like a hot cobbler. key lime cobbler. Yeah, peach cobbler. Huh? Peach, cobbler. peach cobbler with ice cream on it. Yeah, can you do ice cream with key lime pie? No, anything with ice cream disgusting. is disgusting. Our numbers are just shooting dude, up right now. How do you eat <laughs> key lime pie, dude? I've gone to. You what don't you put amazing. it right in the trash no, can. I, I went to Key right West, now. where the Key Lime Pie is from, and it sucked. Boom. It's so sour. 
Boo. You got bad Keelan Pie then. Yeah. yeah. He was at the source. It, no. Okay. So he went I to once, the source. I no, once wrote. There is I once no wrote good Keelan Pie. There I, is I once, no. Oh my on. gosh. This is garbage. I'm I had an Uber here. driver who was from Key West and he said, did you know there's no such thing as a key lime? Like the, the tree is extinct. So you're just getting lime pie. Key, That's key limes are dead. They They're don't lime exist pie. anymore. I'll take lime pie. It's awesome. I love it. Yeah, it's it's just <laughs> yeah. Now that was his. I don't. You gotta trust the source. I guess key limes are just smaller limes. They're just smaller and they have more flavor. And MK, have you ever had the uh, the key lime cookies, like the powdered sugar on top of the key lime cookie? Uh, no, but that, I'll, that's, I'll try that all day. Give it to me. That's hey. an elite cookie. Speaking of our viewers, I just do got to say, like, the live viewers the last couple of weeks have been off the charts. Yeah. I guess Misery Loves Company, so shout out to everybody who's been watching us on YouTube. Yeah, shout out to Jackson and William and, you know. Everybody in the else? chat, yeah. Everybody. But everybody that's just lurking exactly. in the background, we see you and we appreciate you. <laughs> uh, have y'all ever had a uh, Black Forest cake from Swiss uh, it's pastry shop? Elite. It's, it's pretty good too. Yeah. You know, my thing with cake is they over icing the damn thing. Yeah, yeah. Black, the black forest cake is totally different. It's like the it's a different experience to all together. Well, so that was good. fun. I'm ready to go watch the Mavs. Yeah. Uh, no game Tuesday, by the grace of God. Uh, we will see you Thursday night, 6 p.m. at Lupton Field for. No. Uh, yeah, Thursday. Right? Is it at home? Is it for yeah, real at home? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hosting is a home game Thursday and Friday, both at six or six thirty. They're kind of around that age, and then two o'clock on Saturday. Um, so yeah, early games this week, and uh, that'll that'll screw us up on the next pod when we're talking yes, about will. game one, two, and three. <laughs> yep. But we appreciate all the live uh, additions tonight. Thank you for the comments and uh, you know the cobbler garbage uh whatever you're saying from william thank you uh you mean the key lime garbage because that's no. where it belongs right in no. the trash. you no. take key lime pie and put it right in the trash as always we end our pod saying go frogs go key lime pie go frogs go frogs, <laughs> go frogs. night fellas chicken hey. pot pie is the best. <laughs>